Hey guys, my name is Sona, and today, let's talk photovoltaics. So let's jump right into it by talking a little bit about solar panels. You've probably heard a lot about solar panels, especially due to all the news surrounding climate change, but you might have also seen them around you too. I can tell you that I've seen solar panels on houses in my neighborhood, on buildings in the city, and even on streetlights along highways. So if you've seen solar panels, you've actually seen a photovoltaic device. Photovoltaic devices are defined as those devices that convert sunlight into electricity. So devices that convert sunlight into electricity are pretty cool, but have you ever considered how exactly they convert that sunlight into electricity? Well, today we're going to explain exactly how photovoltaics work. And here to help me is Dr. Davies. Hello there, Sona. Hey, Dr. Davies. So, I guess let's start by talking about a normal electric device, like, let's say, a light bulb. So, a light bulb works when a bunch of electrons, or a current, is flowing through it. Current is what most of our electric appliances use to work. But, how do we generate that current? And most importantly, how do we generate it using sunlight? Good question, Sona. This is where we need what's called a photovoltaic material. And what we're going to do with the photovoltaic is make a solar cell. Now, how are we going to do that? We're going to need to borrow the electrons from the solid so they can power our device. But there's a problem. The electrons are strongly bonded, and they'd really rather not leave the solid. So we're going to have to give them some extra energy so they can leave. That energy is going to come from the sun and it's called the band gap. Let's say an electron is a pole vaulter. It needs to get over the bar to leave the solid, and the height of the bar is called the band gap. Wait a second, so do all materials have the same band gap, or are they different? That's a good question, Sona. No, different types of materials have different band gaps. Let's think about a metal. Band gap in a metal is very small. That would be like a two inch height bar in our pole vaulting analogy. Insulators, like a glass, they have very large band gaps. That would be a pole vault height of 21 feet. Did you know that's even higher than the world record, which is about 20 feet, two and a half inches? A semiconductor like silicon has a medium band gap. That would be Oh, a pole height of about six feet or so. Oh, so I know a lot about silicon because it's a pretty common material. It's used in glass, ceramics, concrete, and most of our electronics. It's also pretty cheap, which makes it really useful. But why is silicon's band gap important here? Let's go back to pole vaulting. Silicon's band gap is the height of our bar, and the energy from the sun is our pole. If the pole's big enough, we can clear the bar, and then the electron can leave the solid. Right, so now that we've gotten over the pole, we can power the device. Well, yes and no. Now we've got to make the electron do what we want it to do. It's got a couple of choices. Here we are, we've cleared the bar. We could just fall straight back down to the ground, and we're back where we started. That's like saying we had the light in, and we just get light out. We don't get anywhere. But we want to change the way we come down, having cleared the bar. We want to send the electrons through a circuit to power our device. That's a different path. So, for example, what we could do, Sonar, is at the top of the bar, we'll put in a slide. And so instead of just falling straight down and bashing ourselves on the ground, we're going to come down the slide and guide the electron along a different path that we want through our device. And once our electrons are flowing through the device, we've effectively powered the device using electricity generated from the sun. Wow, this sounds amazing. And it also seems really effective too. In theory, since there's always sunlight, you can always generate energy using solar panels. However, we aren't all using solar panels and solar energy right now, right? And why is that? Part of it is because solar cells efficiencies are all over the place. You can get anywhere from 4% efficient to 46% efficient, depending on the specific type of solar cells. So why aren't they completely efficient? In theory, 
all the sunlight that hits the solar cell should be absorbed and then converted into electricity. But not all the light that hits the solar panels are absorbed. Much of it is actually ref reflected off of the solar panel. And another reason is that the type of light that hits the solar panel is not right all the time for current generation. And you can explain this using the pole vaulting analogy. Sunlight provides many different energies. That's like many different sized poles. Several of them are big enough so we can clear the bar and go down the slide. But some of the poles are too small and we can't even clear the bar. In other words, this means that all the light that comes from the sun isn't being used, and it makes solar panels less efficient. Well, there's a lot of research going on at the moment to improve those efficiencies with a lot of success, but we do have to think about how much they cost. So small solar cells are not too pricey, but the bigger panels, price is still an issue, and they can be more expensive than other types of fuels. Uh, but those other types of fuels are not environmentally friendly. But the bottom line often is how much do they cost. But again, there's a lot of advances being made at looking at new materials that could be even cheaper. Right. Like Dr. Davies mentioned, there is so much research being done in order to improve on solar panels' efficiencies and costs. One example of this is Dr. Lal at the ANU Research School of Engineering. His group is using designs and structures inspired by butterfly wings to make solar panels more efficient. In addition, recently, the world record for solar cell efficiency was actually broken by a team at the University of Toledo, led by Dr. Yan. Not to mention all of the cool inventions involving solar panels that are being researched. Right. In addition, you have companies like Tesla that are researching solar roofs for cars, which mean that cars might be completely self-powered by sunlight alone. Considering that in 2016, a new solar system is being installed every 84 seconds, solar energy looks to be spreading. And that's really good for America and the entire world because solar power is a really important renewable source of energy, mainly because it did not produce any carbon waste like coal, oil, natural gas, or other types of energy. And in a world where climate change is a growing threat to humanity, it is so important that we continue to work to lessen our carbon footprint to help reduce the effects and pace of climate change and hopefully change our world for the better. Thanks for watching everyone, and a special thanks to Dr. Davies for coming in and joining me on this video.